Ten seconds remain. Dire team ban. Radiant team ban. Okay, uh, let's get you back into game number two. Draft is underway. We've got Captain Lacoste to bring you all the details as far as the uh, second draft is concerned. What are you expecting, Cap? I am expecting Shadow Meme. Shadow Meme? Shadow Meme. Shadow, 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 shadow The Meme Shadow. <laughs> Sha shadow Demon. <laughs> okay. Vegas Squadron are going to first pick Shadow Demon Lacoste. No, they're not. What uh, do you think about that? What did I, what did no, I tell you? We didn't no, have they're time not. to discuss. Yeah. They're gonna ban the Shadow Demon, yeah. and they're still gonna go for Bane first pick. <laughs> no, they, they will if if it, if, they, if it doesn't get banned by Vichy, which even though we've just won't. upgraded its level ten talent to double rapiers. Oh, double rapiers yeah. now. <laughs> See now he's considering Bane as <laughs> reasonable. No, 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 I'm thinking about the hero that's gonna pick up those rapiers. <laughs> you, oh, oh well, <laughs> it all came to G a crashing end. The ban too. So Vega Squadron are, are protecting themselves from themselves. Is that what's Ex happening right now? <laughs> if it's in the pool, I must pick it. If it's not, then I'm not going to pick it. So he's denying the pick for himself, that which is pretty smart. Yeah. This, this is the next level ne thing. I was going to say, ne next level bans. Five seconds before, you know your enemy, before you know your know enemy, yourself. you must know yourself. Ban your own bad picks to stop you pick. I love it. Maybe, uh, maybe, so they're no just, more, maybe they're just used uh, two bands in the first stage. Why they did it? Dire team pick. <laughs> Dire team pick. Radiant team pick. Oh, <laughs> like, oh shit, guys! They're, I thought I was they're... banning Bane. <laughs> uh, and we're oh going to get a God. giant roll for Vichy Gaming. Holy we talked about crap. this this morning, actually. Paparazzi does like the gyro. It is a staple of this particular region as well, and has been over the last few Ten weeks. I mean, we know Gyro is a penicillin for undying, plus Five Ogre Magi, Bloodlust that kills those zombies and the Tombstone even faster. Yeah, it makes Gyrocopter so much stronger as a hero. Gonna get Omni Knight in return this time around. Surely they're gonna ban away the Brewmaster. So, what I expect from Vici is someone to get the Spirit Vessel pretty quickly against all those heals. Undying Omni Knight works miracles. Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. Well, yeah. What do you think about the items? When the patch came out, uh, I thought um, Meteor Hammer is the new shit. Then it's actually just shit after. Uh, okay, I will give you my ranking. Uh, my ranking was uh, Kaya. It's number one because I felt like it was just going to be useful on a lot of heroes. Ten seconds and it's not. Remaining. It's only useful on three heroes. Pagna, I mean, it, maybe it's super Storm, OP for those and the uh, well, Spans, Tinker. I think it's a consideration. Um, and then I think bottom was Aeon Disc. I was like, I don't, it's like a very situational item. Uh, I thought Meteor Hammer thingy was like just kind of okay. Um, what else was there? Spirit Vessel. I, I think that's, uh, I think that was probably one of the higher rated items because like white, like it could literally be like half of what that is and, and you would still consider it because it's an yeah. upgrade to earn, right? You're, you don't you don't like selling your urn if you're like a four position, so you're always you're always happy with an upgrade to earn. It's like a game. Why not? Why wouldn't you do it? I was always an urn guy. That's the must have item in your team, especially now. Ten Wait, were you still playing with urn? Yeah. <laughs> what really? <laughs> That's nice, yeah. isn't it? I don't know how how old has urn been. I, I don't know forever. It was in Dota one, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was. Was it? Yeah, it was. I remember now. For some reason, I thought it was a Dota 2 item. Death Prophet. Well, Ouija Gaming pretty much picks it every time they can. I was surprised they didn't pick it earlier in the game number one. Ouija Gaming I, I... looks so strong during the Dota pit until the finals, until Liquid said it's enough. If you lose yeah, the game so three, enough. we're going to yeah. lo lose it. I, uh, oh, dude. <laughs> I really gotta look at bands before I speak. I literally was gonna say, like, oh, I think Storm Shoot really good, and I noticed it was banned, and I was like, okay, well, if you can't have Storm, get Queen of Pain! That would be really good here. Um, the point is, like, they don't have, uh, like, you just want uh, heroes that are able to burst down. Um, 
Death Prophet and Gyrocopter are very susceptible uh, to Queen of Pain, especially, and they don't have tremendous control over Philbin. A good storm game, despite what happened last game. Dire uh, I think this would be a. Are they going to go the. Jets? BM is still in the pool if if they want to go for it. So is, but, uh, I mean, but I mean, Slardar. Omni Knight is uh, right. picked already, so it's not going to be an off lane. Remaining. They could fit a Slardar in if they want, if they're willing to take that risk of double Five melee. Five seconds remaining. Ports. Maybe like an SF is their mid or something. You just want a lot of like single target damage. You want to be able to burst down Death Prophet, Gyrocopter. Maybe this is a, a rare mid Lena game. Maybe that's what it'll shape up to be. Mid Lena has not been successful. We saw SG try it out. Mm -mm, didn't work for them. Uh, who else? Tried it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because Samael was spamming yeah. it. Yeah, didn't work out for EG, I think. And he played it really well. Can't get the demon, take the shaman. They have so much push on the VG gaming side already. Ten Real scary. Remaining. So for their off lane, Five they might go for remaining. something to drop the fight, maybe Tidehunter, if it doesn't get banned. They have two big ultis plus Shadow Shaman, but uh, they can just pop one, pop two, take maybe even two towers at once. What does Vega need? I, would, I mean, they need a... Uh... They need a... I don't know, they can go um, aggressive tri lane with uh, Venge Undying yeah. plus one. They need either oh, clock span. I mean, I think it's Florida. You have to get an initiator here. You have to be able to jump these heroes and make sure that they don't get on top of your buildings with um, wards and exorcism. Sniper is a good pick, yeah, though. A little bit of distance for the CIS popular pick. They don't have any gap closers on the side of Vici so far, no. especially against the sniper Ten who can be repelled. Remaining. So that might be the problem for Vici. Yeah, and, and one of the gap, be, better gap closers remaining. versus Sniper is countered by Venge, um, with the Batrider. So, Tide, Mag. I love to play Radiant Mag, as I mentioned, but... Uh, I mean, Gyro still works well, if, even though he's not a melee hero. Don't they have to... Doesn't Vega Squadron have to get an initiator? They need some sort of... They need something to start fights. Remaining. Get a Shadow Blade on Venge. Just stun Shadow people. Blade, yeah. yeah. Five Hi -ya. seconds remaining. With the plus 400 magic missile damage or whatever <laughs> it is, that level 25 talent. <laughs> Something absurd. Radiant team pick. Oh, Tide get, gets banned. Seems like Vega is smart after all. Or am I too loud? <laughs> huh? Dude, what if they voided? It's not even that good versus Sniper or Venge. Well, Void is a good, good choice, though. It, to lock it, down the Sniper it, has a DPLT gyro combo. Yeah, it has a lot of synergy Dyer with the beat game. Flada. I, yeah, I, don't we mentioned know, I don't know how the Witch Doctor would have fit into their lineup, to be honest. They would have been entirely focused on Yeah, but now they, have, now they have two melee uh, support Slardar Undying. I'm always mm. against that. And I'm offline base to finish. Is that like a old Dota 1 principle sort of thing? Nah, it's Don't been, have it's double a, melee it's supports? It's for, for the years, probably. Yeah. Because I, 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 I know I still works. cling to that as well. Every single time I see double melee supports, I'm like... <sighs> Uh, yeah, it's not working out. I think the win percentage is uh, twenty percent. Throw, throwing it out there. You think you're coming just, out with the garbage I, right now? I'm, I'm sorry. What's that? Knoxville uh, just died. Uh, I think you may just kill some statisticians out there, uh, Lacoste, with that one. Uh, let's uh, turn our attention to more normal uh, stats, which is which one of you is going maybe? to be right? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> in terms of predictions. I'll go with Vichy once again. Uh, they have their comfortable picks. Uh, Young 11 was pretty much shining on the offlane. We saw him in the previous game, didn't have that good start, but still managed to control the fight, control the Omni Knight. So it's going to be a lot of fun on his shoulders as well this game. I like uh, I like Vegas draft a lot more than yeah. I did in game number one. Enough to swing you? No, because okay. I didn't think they played well enough in game number one. Vegas squadron. Okay. Um, so I think VG Gaming is still going to be able to win this. All right, two zero. As far as the uh, two experts are concerned, will it be two zero? Let's find out as we head into game number two and head back to the commentary team. I think this has been one of the most brutally honest panel tournaments so far. Give me your honest opinion, Merlini. Do you think Vega are good enough to beat VG? Potentially. This game... Oh, the draft, the draft after watching game one, if they play the same level of Dota they played in game one... Well, they drafted more teamfight. They led with the Undying pick, right? And then they have the Ventral Spear. Both of those are pretty good. And they have the Sniper to kind of stall off. So I like their game plan a lot more. Their chances are much, much higher than game number one. Higher Dota. than 20%? Higher than tits over ass. <laughs> Whatever that means. We we talked about it. We looked this up in the break. I don't know, Toby. I'm just going... This is... Why are you trying to explain it to me? Because you don't understand it. <laughs> Higher than whatever what? that means. This is, this is just like, why, why don't you explain Dota mechanics to me? It's just because you'll never understand it. All right. That's... It's an expression, Toby. I'm just trying to express myself about how I believe your chances are in this game. Oh, God. Can I, are, can I actually have Blitz back? Like, can I get a trade out for Malini, please? He'd flame you even harder than I would. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. You know that's true. He, he would drop the bone a lot earlier. <laughs> I think that, that would be true. Their chances are much better, though. I, I like, yeah, the Omni Knight didn't do that much last game, but there's no brood this game to mess with them, and they have multiple threats in the team fight aside from just the Omni Knight. So, yeah, laning phase, I would say, is probably slightly favored for Vega, just like last game. Yep. But oh, we're, we're back into this wonderful world of, of the Slayer and Lanham battling it out. Good luck to Scriff for finding First Blood. It's an easy way. We watch all three lanes of, of everything in the early stages. So Paparazzi and Fenrir run the off lane as the duel against Afterlife. That leaves uh, the dual duel in mid. And uh, then the top lane, where it's the duel on Solo. Seems so much pressure being applied to these three positions all day long. Well, just the off lane in general. Just... It's the new safe lane. Well, you, you, you run it on the safe lane, but it's actually the off lane. You think that's because the uh, the creep positioning that got changed around as well? And the deny. And the deny. The nice hurt, man. Well, so far only Jarrah's staying on top of that. Slayer topping a fair chunk of damage, but Shrapnel will create space. Just keeping Lanham off the back of the Undying at least. I wonder if anyone in the history of competitive is going to take the Shrapnel DPS talent. That talent is atrocious. I'm so, it got bumped by 5 DPS. What's the option? Plus 40 attack speed over plus 25 Shrapnel DPS. Yeah. D D okay, it does 75 damage already. So you're increasing it. Like, I mean, 40 attack speed is way better. Shrapnel DPS. Better or worse than Meteor Hammer? We need, we need see, item tiers. See, this, this is the Ice Rock way of patching things. You'll end up having plus five, like plus five every single time the patch comes out. And there'll be something else like it'll give you like uh, an extra two charges of, of shrapnel. Like, like you just increase it and increase it and increase it. Yeah. But look at some of these other towns. Like Vengeance 25 is 400 magic missile damage. Yeah. And then you have 25 shrapnel damage per second. It's not even guaranteed. You can just walk out of it. Or you can BKB. Oh, trouble up on top lane. Young 11. Okay. Not for okay. anything about Shrapnel. He, 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 <laughs> you have a lot of pent-up anger. Oh, no. I love Shrapnel. I just hate the talent. <laughs> Shrapnel's, Shrapnel's really good. I take that in oh, early draft. Magic Missile's going to connect, but they can't chase this. It's uh, too deep. It's okay. He wanted that clarity value. Oh. 
extra clarity value right there, sir. And even gets the proper pull. Also, right now, CS-wise, Lane's doing really good for the gyro. 19-11 for him on that bot lane. Sniper's having a pretty good time in mid. In fact, he's completely stopping all over this Death Prophet. Going 16-3. There goes Beastmaster. Uh, but yeah. Sniper. Really beating up that, uh, that, uh, that Death Prophet. But problematic for the Beastmaster. Took a lot of damage that early harassment. And VS has just been up in, in uh, Eleven's face. Bottom lane on the run now. Afterlife homing missiles right in his tail. And this will set him up just long enough for pop attack from Paparazzi. Oh. They got such high movement speed when you've got that bloodlust to work with too. Illusion. And Jaro's already fast. And he has no degen. wonder what build Afterlife is going to do this game. Last game he went for... Drums and solar. This game. I'm sure, what you go for. Not feed. Probably not a radiance build. You would think you'd actually go radiance in this? Oh, no, but I have some lot on. He's not getting enough on this game. The whole. It seems like, like if there's going to be a proper team fight, then even more sustain is going to be. A nicer option. Yeah, I just don't know whether it's like a Greaves or like a... Well, you could do the Greaves sort of and then just work with the Soul Rip of the Undying. Yeah. That should be that should be enough to give Vega like overwhelming power and be able to survive against the, the Death Prophet's exorcism. Right now, they're just trying to kill her off. Able to do so with massive amounts of stuns for Spirit Siphon and one charges. This feels very similar to our game earlier today when Death Prophet was attacked, but the difference is they didn't dive too far bottom lane. VG, they are coming underneath that tier one town. Quick purification. Only level two, but level two is enough to survive. Both the top lane and the safe lane of Vega being pushed back. He just has so many denies. Look at his deny. He has 19 denies. That's insane. Well, how are you meant to stop him? It's not like Omni can walk up there and say, I have a mallet. Yeah, but his experience is crazy. He's level five and a half. Mid did get dual lane, but mid by comparison is four and a half on the roof. And almost level five on that probably who's been solo there the majority of the time. And they have a dual lane down there too. Like the Shum's getting a ton of levels as a result. Young Eleven. Playing around with that vengeful spurt. Not able to do anything really with it, however, no one was gonna TP over. Until now, Shadow Shaman will come and join the party. The shrine party. Everyone has a free beverage on the house. Okay, he's level six, but they walked right into him as a reward. Fenrir instantly gobbles it up. Oh no, is he going to place one right on top of the sentry? It is, but they have vision over there. Yeah, that sentry's about to time out as well. Young 11, popping a lot of damage. Fenrir has to come up to help. The shot goes oh, out first, but the damage. Bash. He actually has a single point in it as well, which is also surprising. Yeah, he was about to get roared, if not. And all that minus armor, too. That does way more than 60 damage. Value. They signed a stack for the gyrocopter. Got to watch these stacks pretty closely for, for VG Gaming. That's going to be a lot of money. Uh, there's nothing inside the jungle, it's just towards the ancients. Yeah, they're going to need more people to do that. Yeah. Fenrir wrapping around. Looking for the slaughter. Able to lock him in position. Roar is available, letting it rip. Paparazzi. Homing missile will find this kill even if you try and run away. Paparazzi gets it. Flat cannon turns on after life force back to his tier one tower. But VG Gaming just switching up their lanes now. Bottom lane abandoned by both sides. But that's a lot of money on a gyro. So they're pushing towards the top lane. They're forcing the issue. Trying to bring down this tier one tower. Paparazzi seems to be happy for now to tank a decent bit of damage. Yeah, he's perfectly okay. He needs to create some space for the dead prophet. The prophet doesn't even have boots right now. A little bit poor. That's okay though. Well, once you turn on exorcism, if you force enough rotations from Vega to the top lane, you just burn the mid lane. Almost feels like what happens when you have a DK in that lane. But instead, VG, they 
pull the creep wave and they drag it back a little bit further. This can't be a fun lane for an ogre. Getting misted up all the time by by the slaughter. That's his job. Be annoying. Tank up, tank up spells. They are going to smoke up top. Vengeful and Undying sitting behind the Omni Knight. That's not great, especially without swap. It's going to be a little bit tough. This is going to be during daytime. Maybe they can approach the long way around to the left side and catch mm. him by surprise. But like running straight up the lane is not going to work out for them. Paparazzi kind of filling it out. Oh, right, here's, the, here's the fourth TP. Paparazzi moves away from the tombstone. No swap is used said to pull him back. The shrapnel comes down, but Bloodlust gives him the move to be back. Second shrapnel charge under the towel. But four heroes from Vega moved in. But the hero with the swap came in way too late. Now it's VG's turn. Wrapping around the top. He didn't have swap. They have the Observe Ward down. They see up the hill. Stunned. Match. Massive amounts of damage. Into the Shadow Shaman. Paparazzi gonna get assaulted. But he brings down the Tombstone. Clearing up the lane for VG Gaming to move a little bit further forward. Really? <laughs> I don't know if that was a, a reason to dance that fight. Oh, well, at least they get a free kill on the Shaman. Wasn't able to keep that ward up, sadly. Would have made things a lot easier for that push, but bigger fend them off and we'll just sit behind the sniper and stack up a little bit. Not sure who's going to do that stack, though. Yeah, it doesn't seem like... I suppose sniper can kite it. Kind of, but they have the regen creeps. You're going to have to drop tombstone maybe to kill it or bring Omni Knight with the purification. It's, gonna, it's still going to hurt. I mean, the thing about it, you have to worry about Gyro taking it, you have to worry about the Shaman taking it. Shaman's almost level 6. I think it's definitely worth rewarding that stack if, let's say, you get the free mid-T1 uh, mid with that. Just so I don't think looking to skip that. Big, big stack. With the max flag, looks like Phil is lacking on a fair bit of damage. Yeah, it's, it's going to take some time. They're already, like, half HP. They're healing up really quickly. <laughs> Focus them one by one. Paparazzi will have himself another flight cannon up in uh, three seconds' time. Okay, they're mostly but full yeah, HP. They're, okay, yeah, they're, they're full. They need something else here. That's why I'm a little bit surprised you're trying to take it without like, another, one of the, another big spell. But if he gets rid of all the regen creeps, he'll be fine. This is still going to take forever. They already used a the cell. They used two rounds of flags. There you go, Lonnie. Thank you for him. Yep. Okay. Now, now they can finish the job. Their flak is a charm. But Actually, he's not gonna do that. <laughs> That's a long time. Sorry, to you're back. the master of puns now. Third flak, man. Yeah. He's good level server towards Lionel, giving space for the for the supports to also get more room to breathe. Can't believe that bottom lane's being just left alone. Fenrir oh, is getting some levels. You can you can mass up more to push it down. Stack versus stack. Yeah, team sounds good. It's still just they don't have that much damage. They have the tank. But yeah, it's not a farm trading. Oh, I thought there'd be a lot less of this with the movement of the shrine. Oh, this might need the shrapnel DPS. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, Toby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes Tombstone. Three heroes being being committed to do this. It just seems like both sides are committing so heavily in order to get these these flash farm in to get a critical item. SMY is completed for the gyrocopter. Oh, sorry, just the Yasha. Man, Aloha went for Master Madness too on the Sardar. He, I could see him easily getting blown up with Sprint on. That is a scary move. Here they come. Oh, they see him. Snipe the bounty rune. Our lives on the run. There's uh, Lanham. He'll wrap around the back. Massa force dropped by Fenrir. Gets a wall trap over from the BS. Swapped him out. And now it's Paparazzi. Caught. No, nope. he does break free. The creep wave killed off one of them. But Paparazzi's still on the wrong side. The track's brought down. Fenrir shackled up Slade. Just trying to keep that tombstone off the field for as long as possible. But it was not long enough. Afterlife left a double kill. Young Eleven, the next target. VG retreats back to the team. Here, one tower crushes out with the mist. Way too much amplification of the damage. Afterlife will claim his third kill 
for this fight as VG lose four. Yeah, hello, where were you? That profit. That is the perfect opportunity. There's like not that many creeps. You're tower diving as five with exorcism. I think that would have been a completely different fight. GA was used very, very early on and great war trap, but they just actually did not have enough damage at yeah. the time. If they had the silence, they could have kept kept it there a lot longer and you wouldn't have had that swap, but let's watch that initiation once more. So the TP comes in from VS, Fenrir reads it perfectly, and then Paparazzi gets swapped in. Yeah, he actually gets obliterated on there. But the GA actually catches some of the creeps as well, so they waste a lot of damage from the wards. Yeah, the silence would have really helped. He got his repel off after the roar, which was really bad coming out for her. And the thing about it is Death Prophet didn't even ultimate in the mid lane, so she actually yeah. like, really didn't get that much out of it at all. However, BG will know that they need to bring all five, or at least their main team fighter, if they want to take a team fight that deep onto their side of the map. And yeah. instead, they will go with a super safe play, up stacking more and more. That what was very deep too. Like you, you were still between a tier one and a tier two tower, 13 minutes into the game. And while well, Sniper doesn't have a heavy amount of damage, you you give him that free hitting zone with one isolated hero, he'll take it. And right now, Fractal's really... It does a ton of damage relative to HP right now. Dyer's Later on, not so much. With DPS, talent, maybe. With with Fractal talent, maybe I'll have to get the ones. I think I've seen Dyer's someone take it before, but I was under very underwhelmed by it. Well, VG are adding pressure to the bottom lane now. Bring in the Death Prophet. They can keep pushing to the tier 2 tower if they want to. Exorcism is available. Paparazzi is looking very strong as well. Only thing you're a little bit short of, I believe, is that your scepter. Raw is out. Vengeful Spirit caught. Lanham comes in to help out. Even the extra Centaur stomping. As the Beastmaster's extra creep. And VG actually turned their attention towards either mid or Roshan. Both are options for them. Oh, Blink Dagger up on Sardar. I Radiant's not think they see it though. Blink and Mask of Madness. Mm. He's really good at solo killing people. Find them. Well, they have good vision on top of the V on top of the Diocide Jungle Ancients. Oh, here we go with a smoke behind the sniper. I want this T1 tower, but how are they going to get it? Oh, they go for Atos Rush on Undying, too. See that? It's actually oh. moving in towards Roshan. It's starting Roshan. Looks to be a pretty good time to roll. Yeah, well, Tombstone is down with the amplification. Still Heavy amount of damage to Roshan, and no real answer coming in from VG. No exorcism has been cast. That is not value. And Roshan's going to belong to Vega. BG was too late, that Beastmaster Hawk was on the way, but it took too long to get there. Always something that you have to worry about with this mechanic armor. And that's the thing, the, the Omni Knight doesn't have to go for the medallion in this game because they have all these minus armors that are might have just much better inherently at doing Roche and taking down objectives compared to the last game. Omni Knight also going for a Blink Dagger after. Yeah, maybe he's trying to keep up with the slaughter when he jumps in. Be that second front liner. Anything which helps create space for the sniper. Hurricane Plank, Blink Dagger heals. Yeah, I think you can, you can you can jump in there, get your spells off, and then not die. Because they're going to be looking for him with a hawk. That's how you want the fight to start off here. You want to probably roar him, silence this Venge if you can, and burst him down. That's kind of ideal situation, and it's never going to go as clean as that. that Soon to come after my. Is it really need a Blink Dagger though? I, I think the Venge swap might be just good enough to save him regardless of the circumstance. But the other option we were talking about was was him getting something more like Greaves, like Mackets. That was that was the other option, but maybe he feels he's already got enough heal with his basic basic abilities plus the undying. So I mean, even go, go the jump. He could go uh, Solar Crest again. I think Solar Crest would be really good offensively attack. with Amp. You have Wave of Terror and the so, potential Solar Crest. Someone could just die in less than the duration of one crush. Fortification coming out right now from Vega. They drum charge up, looking for this initiation. Repel as the smoke breaks. Slana still wants to move forward, but the sprint just wearing off does not Very have that nice. movement speed to close the distance. That boar just saved his life so hard. Well played, Eleven. Well played.
that four slow down the SARS stop the Flame Dagger during the repel. I hate to tell you though, like you just got double Radiance damage on the god, so the celebration may be very short lived. He doesn't have a an Aegis though. He's still like somewhat vulnerable if the death probably can get him good and if they can deal with the Omni Knight. He's not like invulnerable. Nah, not vulnerable, but still hefty amounts of damage. And then space tries to be created by Vega, the boars, and troll. Slowing down Aloha, and trapping up God. He's happy to stand his ground for the moment. More mist, takes the roar, slaughter, down a half-life, back almost to full thanks to the soul rip. So, forcing a reaction out from VG Gaming. I mean, look at this tower though, is he really doing that much damage? Still really slow. They're yeah. not going to be able to wait out this Aegis, though, not at least at this point. It looks like they are not interested in fighting at all. Let him have the tier 2. Don't fight into the Aegis. But they're not split pushing at all. There's no exorcism used to burn down the T2. There's, There's no, like, ward drop on the it's side It's just towers. momentum. Like, that's, that's all they're doing. It's just momentum in a different lane. Yeah. And thanks to Young Eleven showing himself down here, the ping comes out from Vega. We move down, we fight this guy, and then push bottom lane. It'd be very difficult for them to actually jump, but, you know, they have the farming items that they need. Maelstrom almost up on Sniper, he had the Mask Man as a solo, so he can just do whatever camp he wants, and... Vega looking to be in pretty good shape, taking a little bit slowly, but they're using the threat of their perceived superior team. I still actually think VG's team fight is better, but... With the positioning that they've had, with the gyro dying that one time, and with Death Prophet not being able to fight, so it looks like Vega currently have the stronger team fight. Yeah. yeah. For now. Give it a little bit of time, VG can hit their stride, but Vega do need to, do need to make a couple of mistakes. Game one, they were happy to oblige. Game two, however, I look to try and make things just that little bit harder for VG. Sniper's able to pick up a little bit more damage now, having the Maelstrom. Their clearance is getting better and better for Vega. And I'd love to go for more kills. Even the Blink Dagger for the Omni Knight is now completed. The Repel up, too early on the crush. Young Eleven hiding in the trees. You know they're making a play somewhere. They're not sure where to go. Sniper's a little bit scared. Just drop the shrapnel and leave mid lane in case they're trying to get that tower. It'll just be the top field by the. Wonder if they're going to drop the sentry. Okay. Well, they already battled for vision around this area before, so maybe not feeling like it's required, especially when they can just five five man ball towards the tier two tower. Catapult still up, and the mass surf mods available as well, so. They're smoking. I don't know if they'll get here in time, though. I do not. If they can wrap around the side, they can just nail Young Eleven. Yeah, but they don't have the glyph. Looks like they're going to back up before them. Here's the movement speed from the slaughter. They already have the hog there. Waiting for the attack. Wanham being caught out pretty heavily. And as well as Young Eleven. They get a little bit of distance. Exism is up. So is the tombstone, however, from Slayer. But Beastmaster dying so quickly, Paparazzi's cooldown making it difficult for Vega to disengage from this fight, especially when Ori is just walking himself through this engagement with his big ultimate up and running. All the damage you can get from the Exus and will allow a triple kill. Sniper died as well, getting picked in the back line. And this is going to be a quick push towards the tier 3 tower. I mentioned in game 1 there was one great fight that just allowed VG to gain that momentum in the game and well we just saw it in game two plus two buybacks out from vega directly after the fight that was amazing positioning from that look at his position right here he blinks and he claps and then he silences the omni knight right as soon as the slaughter jumps in and then he gets all spells off he has the arcane rune too and he's just going crazy in the back line gyrocopter sacrifices his life to take on the tombstone and already just cleans up with this arcane rune so much damage coming out of it. Such a dream fight for VG. Thanks to that Arcane as well. It's only uh, 28 seconds before you're going to have Exus and back off cooldown. And they can go again. There's tier 1 tower in the mid. Create more space. Look towards the next Roshan. 
It was, that fight was also especially awkward because they had to... They, Even though it seemed like Vega were defending, like their VTR assaulting their tower, they actually had to walk uphill. Like the starter had to blink up the hill. They had vision back there, but you still have to walk uphill into a choke and things are just much, much more difficult when they had to try and fight around that tombstone and mm -hmm. walk up that hill. They actually clumped up and it's just very difficult to fight like that. Great catch out. The blink is on Fenrir, so instant initiation. And Omni Knight gets deleted. I really prefer the Blink build over the Scepter a lot of the time. I think uh, some of the Chinese players really like the Scepter. I think Yao in particular, he likes like Arcane Boots Scepter. But I think the Blink is just much more versatile. Like the Scepter is great for dropping on towers, but if you don't win a team fight, you can't just drop it on towers all the time. It'll just engage on you before you get to the tower. And the Axe is pretty good, but... Oh, Young Eleven. They've got a second Tiger, just one after the other. Yeah. Slayer burns the Tombstone to try and force out the mid lane. But that'll go down as well as himself, so mid lane not forced out. VG will do the counter push with Necros and Minions. One of the big downsides of having a solid opposition one is just that he he can't farm quickly. And because of that, he can't gank as efficiently because he needs to keep his farm up. So he just, you know, he has farm for his BKB. He really needs it. But at the same time, there's no threat around the map when he's just busy farming nations. These double TPs, silence onto the vengeful spirit. Still got the tower. Or. <laughs> or. Yeah, as long as you don't lose anything else, sure. But for now, right, VG's just taking objective after objective. BKB does not make him that safe in the team fight. If a GA comes out on him, yes. But I don't know. Do you really want your Omni Knight blinking to the middle of a fight even with GA? His armor is going to be low because of the mask. He's going to have to sprint on and he's going to have to deal with exorcism and. Uh, so for that once again, Fenrir doing the work. The double silence, cancelling off any kind of help Undyne could have done. Shaman will fall, a nice run away. The BKB is burnt. Blink's up to the high ground. The Slayer retreats, but Blink Yules, the sniper, in real trouble. The roar is down. Spirit Look Siphon, they silence. need more damage, however, it's just not there. The exorcism was split between so many targets, so Vega, everyone's pretty low. Hearing an assassination, not gonna come out, however. These sounds are so good coming out from the Orient. Oh, now it's coming out. Crush, damage, oh! The Swarm! He didn't catch Ori in it! He did one more attack and the Slaughter would have got the big kill. But he pays with his life, initiating in almost suicidally. And now they have to deal with double evasion, the butterfly on top of the Sword Crest. So now you have to start thinking about, what, MKB maybe at some point, but Sniper really needs BKB. Slaughter doesn't farm that well. He just died. Oh, if and, if, oh, if no. you go BKB on God, like, I don't think, know if you really win this game. Like, it is, almost feels like you have to go glass cannon and rely on your other teammates to still be those buffers. Regeneration. But, but then the you're not winning the vision game to actually have those buffers in the right position. Yeah, it's just not. It's just a really tough position. They're, the thing is, they don't feel safe even with these two defensive heroes. Like the Omni Knight and the Vent are supposed to be pretty good at protecting cores, but they still don't feel safe. They still have to fight DKB. So network doesn't look that bad for uh, Vega, but because they have to build two BKBs and VG don't have to build BKBs at all, Gyrocopter mm -hmm. actually just completely skipped it in favor of Butterfly. So. Gyrocopter is typically thought of as a BKB. It's mandatory on this hero, but yeah. not this game for him. And he's able to get away with it, and his net worth is going to continue to skyrocket. And his damage in the fight is going to be way higher than his net Did he go for the flak talent? Yeah. That flak talent seems like one. More and more hits. Yeah, and now I'm going to go into Satanic as well. So a lot of survivability coming the way of the Gyrocopter. As he said, bypassing that BKB. Roshan is up and available. VG haven't done it yet. Exism is still not up and running, so they do not want to have a fight. I really like the Manta. Uh, it used to be pretty Okay, powerful. Exism just came back on full down. They jump in straight away. This time, it is going to be the silence of the league. But the damage output so high to bring down that Death Prophet, but it's still not enough. Not when Paparazzi has the perfect position on the high ground an ultra kill for him four heroes from vega pushing up the daisies and they draw a line down the mid to take a beeline to the tier three tower 
Yeah, the 5.7k damage from Paparazzi. He has damage for free in that fight. He didn't even use all the flag charges. He got he only got seven flag kicks off before what? everyone just died. <laughs> Look at that positioning. Oh my goodness. That was insane. And the thing this tells me too is that Vega don't really trust their supports. Like I think you as you mentioned, you just have to not go to TV. Like you have repel. You, yeah, it makes you invulnerable, but who cares if you're invulnerable? You can't do any damage. Like, these healers aren't really dropping low. Yeah. And imagine once he gets satanic, then he's just going to be unkillable. How are you going to have the damage to deal with this at all? You need MKBs, you need just more damage in general in order to, like, if, if we can see damage dealt at the end of the game, I'm sure Paparazzi is just going to be crazy high. Yeah. He doesn't care about dying because he's going to get damage off and the rest of his team's going to clean up. It was a perfect example at that fight where he killed the tombstone, died. He was still flagging people. And then Ori was able to clean up because everyone was already so low. Mm -hmm. But on Vegas, like, okay, you PKB, and then then what? I, I still find it amusing, though. Like, okay, so, yeah, Vega didn't have their sniper, so they didn't have the damage coming from him. But Death Prophet was deleted just as quickly. Like, it was it was a one-for-one -one trade off in that 4-4 situation. Paparazzi just just uh -oh, went. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The Hawk sees all. The roar is out, however. Vengeful Spirit was trying to create a little bit of space for the call down from Paparazzi with the vision. The Black Cannon damage. He's killing him on the other side of the bloody pit. You can't escape from this. The stuns are around, but Paparazzi kill after kill after kill after kill. He's murdered, but actually, he may actually be the man to murder the PCs. He has done so much damage here. Four heroes down from Vega. You don't even need Roshan. They're coming for the GG push. They want the 2-0. They want the three the three points. As much, and right now, it looks like they're going to get it. As much damage as he's been doing, I think a lot of this has been set up by Alena. Like, that hawk in that fight was particularly good. The fight where he also, like, tanked up the Sora Crunch and had the hawk to, to pop the smoke. Uh, it has been really big for them. I would actually kind of put him as MVP, then Fenrir after that, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of their contribution and it, what they did to help them win this game. It's those supports where you where you have the confidence in them. As yeah, you said, like, you don't, you don't have that in Vega, and you, it's, it's really highlighting it heavily. Yeah, they're playing like they don't have an Omni Knight on their team. They're playing like they, you know, they're, they're, just, they're just scared, you know? You can't mm. play like, you know, you're... The big badass in the room is gonna whoop everyone's ass. Here's his, his your honey build. The double butterfly is uh, is now in the hands of the Jara Cop. They're combining it up with the double damage rune. Double butterfly is much better now that MKB has been changed. They actually got, I believe they got the MKB onto, yeah, they did onto the sniper. Yeah. So he, he bought out for this. He moved away from the BKB. Yeah, he. he that is completely the right choice, although I would prefer it if he didn't actually go for the Ogre Club, but he, he realized, yeah, no one's dying. Who's going to do the damage? Solder's there to amp people. You know, he's not the best position one at just purely dealing damage because he gets kited so easily and he is very squishy with his build. Mm -hmm. So it's really just all a sniper. They have Venge to back him up. They have Venge to protect him. They have Solder amp to do damage, but, you know, if he has no damage items, okay. Triple catapults. I thought Paparazzi may try and force the issue just because he had the the tail end of the double damage room, but... No, he can't get in a good position. You need vision to flack people down. Mm -hmm. So, unless he's on top of the hill, Radiant then he's not going to be able to do that. This is a smart move by them. Yeah, they're really far ahead, but... With a DD... Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, you can just walk up the hill. He's, he's still doing... Like, it's, it's 358 damage a hit. On this gyro, and well, okay, this is one way to get uh, the vision. Smoke yeah, you... getting, then go high ground in through the mid. Once you win the fight here, VG, they know they've won the game. Yep. Oh, uh, countering ward. I still think they could take the fight here. They're just and so they're far. Ahead. Blink, hex, the roars into the back lines, keeping the BS out. This fight, XSM is up and running. They're looking for the kill on the offline, bring him out this. But Paparazzi with the fly kind of damage. He killed off the tombstone, but he almost killed Slayer along with it. The shrapnels are slowing him down, but remember, Paparazzi, he wants to die. He welcomes it because he has the double damage route. He wants a lock maker inside their base while the Megas are now claimed here by VG. Ori did all the work to make that happen. 
And the tier 4 towers are falling. Vega, they just want to wait this out, but they can't do it. Ori blinks in with a Sheba's gun. So much slow, so much damage. Regenerates all of it, however, with the Exorcism and Paparazzi. Neil too deep. Uh, well, there goes the Aegis Immortal anyway, but there goes the game. This is GG. We need boards with the last thing out from Vega. And rightly so, they needed the vision game, but once again, Beastmaster, a critical player yep. in the in the series today. Just see all, kill all. I'm looking at the damage. All. He did more damage than Sniper and Slur combined. How, how much was it actually for? It was 29,000. 30,000 versus 16 and so he did actually significantly more than both of them. But you know, he was really far ahead. Well played, 11. I think this game was much better than his pre-match. Mm -hmm. It was. Played very well. It was uh, fantastic.